Welcome back. This is March 8, 2016. Our guest in this segment is Norm Ryder, and we're going to be talking about electromagnetic hypersensitivity, otherwise known as EHS, mm -hmm. and what it is. Yes, electromagnetic hypersensitivity is when you have serious adverse reactions to levels of electromagnetic radiation. Now, probably all of us are, to a certain extent, uh, sensitive, but in my case, I'm sensitive at much lower amounts than a lot of other people are. That There are a few people around, and there's actually a very good TEDx uh, talk on a person, the uh, electrical engineer that has EHS and had to leave work. I can't really work in an office anymore. I have a hard time even coming in here where I leave here with a headache and I'm very agitated. The TEDx uh, YouTube video is, I made a short uh, one, tinyurl.com TEDx EHS is what it is. And it's seriously affects the lives of a lot of people. School children are having a serious problem with it that it it can cause actually attention deficit issues for them. Of course you aren't going to pay much attention when you start having headaches that are almost in the migraine class of headache. Uh, it seriously impacts your life. So I mean I kind of think we are all I mean, it doesn't that the science just say that when you're exposed, you, um, your cells react. So there is, uh, am I, I could very well be wrong in the science. No, you're quite right that uh, we all react to electromagnetic radiation. Some people, in addition to the damaging the DNA in your cells, etc., it, it also causes severe headaches for them. Um, how many people are electromagnetic hypersensitive? The last figure I saw from Dr. Meg de Havis was 3% are severely electromagnetic hypersensitive and 10% are, shall we say, minimally affected. But she also said that that rate is increasing and by, I think she said, if I remember right, 2017 up to 50 percent of the population would be. I mean that's huge, even just the first three percent. I mean three percent of, of the people, that's a million people, um, being, being impacted by this and it's something as a society we sort of never even talk about. Now what creates the electromagnetic radiation that people are sensitive to? Well, probably the, the sources they get most from is their cordless phone, their cell phone, their other personal communication devices, laptops, uh, iPhones, etc., uh, as well as wireless routers. Uh, and cell towers, of course, are a big one that you almost can't hide from. Those are the main sources. So, I mean, basically we're all awash in it at all times. Yes. Yeah. Now, I kind of always liken this to, sm to smoking and secondhand smoke. Um, we're all exposed all the time, and I think in the end, the price that people are going to pay will be similar to the price that was paid for smoking, and, and that was a very, very, very ugly price that was paid. I'm quite sure that in time people are going to finally put it all together. It's one reason why I'm quite concerned about when WorkSafe BC is investigating claims, they are not investigating to measure the radiation properly. And there's a, a very powerful, we're going to ignore this as long as we can, but when you compare it to smoking, you will say, and probably all your viewers will say the same thing, that yes, cigarette smoking causes cancer. Well, if you use the evidence to support why cigarette smoking causes cancer, and that's from epidemiological evidence, there's the same level of evidence to support the problems with wireless ra or with electromagnetic radiation. And for some reason, we're getting 
the whole population, everyone is trying to pretend and to take the tobacco company's line that it hasn't been proven. It's been proven very thoroughly that because most of the damage doesn't show up for a long time, you've got to go to these epidemiological studies to find it. And in my case, it took 30 years of it before I had a massive tumor. Um, how did you find out that you were hypersensitive? Well, it, it came about in degrees when, after my last operation to remove the tumor, I spent about two months on the sixth floor of the Victoria General Hospital. My room was essentially right in the beam of the cell tower there. And at the time, I was having severe headaches. I was having skin irritations. Um, a lot of, I was having a, a difficult time refocusing. And I kept getting them telling me, oh, well, you just had brain surgery. Don't worry about it. I mean, you're just going to have headaches the rest of your life and take Tylenol. Well, that wasn't a solution to me. When I left, the headaches went away. I went to a few places that had a high level of electromagnetic radiation, I realized after the fact, and the headaches would return, the skin irritations would return. And it wasn't until I got a laptop and was using the laptop, it was a laptop on my lap, and I was getting severe irritation on my legs and developing a welt on my abdomen. And after I talked to the doctor about it, he had no explanation for what it was. I figured I'd better figure this out on my own because I couldn't tolerate the pain in the legs. And I realized the only thing that really changed my life was a laptop on my lap. I'd heard little rumors, hadn't paid much attention to it at the time, up until then. Changed things around, put my laptop on a wired connection and made a big effort to avoid radiation. And the problems went away. And I can make them come back any time I fall on my head and really want them by doing the same thing, that it, there's a very definite correlation. Now, you're very sensitive, so these are the impacts you feel, but all of us, when we use a laptop or, or the cordless phone or the cell phone, the impact is there for all of us. It, it just may... It may never have an impact on us that we notice. Well, I think it probably has more of an impact on you than you realize. That, I mean, it, because it's a force. It's a well, force. It's, it's, it's a doing force, something. But I was going to say that I've been thinking a lot about it with this, uh, the whole discussion and legalizing cannabis. And I know a cannabis cream does help get a, rid of some of the irritations. Now, this cannabis cream is non-hallucinogenic, shall we say, it uses the CBD aspect of cannabis. And I just keep wondering how many people are equating feeling better after they have a bit of cannabis that really what they're doing is they've mitigated some of the effects of electromagnetic radiation. And basically, I mean, I don't think anyone really cares. I feel better. That's all I'm concerned about. And I just wonder how much how many people are self-medicating to get rid of some of the effects of uh, electromagnetic radiation? What are some of the effects of electromagnetic well, radiation? Well, the big one I feel most of the time is a headache. Um, I get skin irritations where it's powerfully itchy, where you'll scratch to the point of drying blood. Um, some of the other effects are extremely agitated irritated. Well, I don't get irritated. Other people are very difficult to get along with, I find. <laughs> uh, but those are some of the prime, I guess you could say, EHS ones. That, that's not getting into the cellular damage yeah, issues. And that's not just you. That's the impact it has on, on the general public and people who are. And I guess it has, but it does have an impact on all of us, just less so that we don't notice it. Or maybe we do notice it, but we have no idea it's being caused by uh, by a sensitivity to a very powerful force. That's, that's And exactly. we're out of time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Norm, thank Thanks. you very much. Enjoyed yeah, the so many, so many interesting things and so many important things to do uh, to move ourselves in the right direction. Thanks for watching Forum. Citizens Forum this week.